Hello and welcome guys to reception. Today we are going to begin with the chapter Mineral and Energy Resources of ICSC Class 10 Geography. Now the full chapter will be covered in two videos. So I'll tell you to watch both the videos. And I hope after watching both the videos, you understand this chapter easily. Now watch this particular video till the end and I hope you like it. If you do, do hit the thumbs up button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to Edusception. Without further ado, let's begin. In this particular chapter, we will have to study about mineral resources and energy resources. First, we are going to begin with mineral resources and later we will cover energy resources. So let's begin. Minerals. Now what are minerals? Minerals are naturally occurring inorganic substances which consists of one or more elements. They have a specific chemical composition and distinct physical properties. Now this is a very simple bookish definition and it is very easy. I hope you understand it. But what basically are minerals? Now first of all, minerals are inorganic substances that are found on the earth's crust. We as humans extract those minerals and use those minerals in many purposes like construction and manufacturing. Now look around you. You don't have to look too far. Look at your smartphone or your mobile. Inside your smartphone or your mobile, you will find copper, which is a mineral. You will find aluminium, which is a mineral. You will find silicon, which is also a mineral. So we are using minerals for different purposes of construction and manufacturing so that we can help ourselves. And we find these minerals on the earth's crust. Next, how many types of minerals are there? Generally, minerals are divided into two types based on whether metal is present in them or metal is not present in them. So we have metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals. Now, as the name suggests, metallic minerals are minerals that contain metals. For example, iron ore, copper, bauxite, etc. Then we have non-metallic minerals, minerals that do not contain any metal. For example, limestone, mica, etc. So minerals are divided into metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals contain metal and non-metallic minerals do not contain metals. Very simple. Next. How do we extract minerals from the earth? Two things, mining and excavation. We dig, we dig, we dig and we find minerals. Now I hope you have seen the show Gold Rush on Discovery Channel. It is a great show and it shows how gold is extracted from the earth. Now we use the process of extraction and we generally extract mineral ores from the earth's crust and then we purify those ores to get the purified mineral. So basically we use the process of mining and excavation to extract minerals from the earth's crust. Now over here we will have to study about four minerals and we will study about them separately, which are iron ore, manganese, copper and bauxite. So now we will start studying about them and we will begin with iron ore. Let's begin with iron ore. First, let me tell you that iron ore is one of the most important minerals for our country. Not only for our country, iron ore is a very important mineral all around the world because iron is obtained from iron ore and in today's world, iron is used in almost everything. First, iron ore is used for the manufacture of iron and steel. Like I told you that iron is obtained from iron ore. We all know the importance of steel and the main component of steel is iron. Next, it is the backbone of modern industries. Almost all the industries nowadays have the use of iron and steel. And we just studied that iron ore is used to manufacture iron and steel. That is why I told you that iron ore is one of the most important minerals all around the world. Next, there are four types of iron ores which are magnetite, hematite, limonite and siderite. Now, magnetite is the best type of iron ore. It contains around 70% of iron. Then we have hematite. 
in hematite there is around 60% of iron present and hematite is the most abundant type of iron ore which is found in India and majority of the iron and steel plants in India use the iron ore of hematite. Next we have limonite. In limonite the iron content is at about 40% to 50% and finally we have siderite. In siderite the iron content is less than 40%. Next. What are the uses of iron ore? Now you guys know this. First, it is used in the manufacture of iron and steel, like I told you. Secondly, it is used in heavy engineering industries like automobile, shipbuilding, etc. Now, locomotives are made with the help of iron and steel. Shipbuilding is done with the help of iron and steel. And many heavy engineering industries use iron and steel. Next, it is used in construction. Now, in home construction or in any type of construction, you may have seen iron rods. Now iron rods are very very important for the stability of a structure and iron is used over there. So it is very important in construction. Next, what is the distribution of iron ore in India? Now the four largest iron ore producing states in India are Odisha, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand and Karnataka. Now, Odisha is the largest producer of iron ore. What are the locations? The locations are Kionjhar, Mayurbhanj and Sundargarh. Then we have Chhattisgarh. In Chhattisgarh, most of the iron ore is found in Durg and Bastar. Then we have Jharkhand. In Jharkhand, we have the districts of Singhbhum and Palamau. And finally, we have Karnataka. In Karnataka, iron ore is mostly found in Bellary, Kemangundi and Kudermukh. So guys that was all regarding iron ore. Everything is very very important over here. So try to understand everything properly. Now we will move on to the next mineral. Moving on to manganese. Manganese is a metallic mineral generally used as a raw material in many industries. Now manganese is also a very important mineral because it is used as a raw material in several sectors of industries. Let's say for example, manganese is used for the production of stainless steel. Manganese is also used for the production of many electronic components. Manganese is also used for the production of dry cell batteries. Other than these, many industries use manganese as a raw material. Now what are the uses of manganese? First, manganese is used for the manufacturing of steel and strengthening of steel. We all know that stainless steel is an alloy and manganese is a very important component of that alloy because manganese provides tensile strength to steel. Next, it is used in the manufacture of bleaching powder and insecticide, simple. It is used in the manufacture of dry cell batteries. Nowadays, the new dry cell batteries that are being made, they use manganese. Why? First of all, manganese helps to increase the thermal capacity of the batteries. Secondly, manganese is non-toxic and thirdly, manganese is an earth abundant element. Other than these, manganese is used in several other industries as raw material. For example, it is used for the production of paint, it is used for the production of electronic components and many other industries. Now, what is the distribution of manganese in our country? The four states that produce the most amount of manganese are Odisha, Madhya Pradesh, Karnataka and Maharashtra. Now, currently Odisha is the largest producer of manganese. Now this data is based on the data of the year 2019. In the year 2020, the state might change. What are the locations in Odisha? Kionjhar, Sundargarh and Kalahandi. Then we have Madhya Pradesh. In Madhya Pradesh, manganese is found in Balaghat, Chindwada and Jabalpur. Then we have Karnataka. In Karnataka, manganese is found in Bellary and Chitradug. Then we have Maharashtra. In Maharashtra, manganese is found in Nagpur and Bandara. Okay guys, so that was all regarding manganese. Everything is very important over here. So try to understand everything properly. Now we will move on to the next mineral. Moving on to copper. Copper is a metallic mineral which is used extensively in the electrical industry. It is extracted from ores like chalcosite, malasite, and cuprite. We all know about copper. 
You might have studied in physics and chemistry that copper is a great conductor of electricity and it is also a great conductor of heat. Because of these properties, copper is used in several industries to produce different types of goods and devices. Especially it is used in the electronic industry because it is such a great conductor of electricity. Other than this, copper is also highly malleable and highly ductile, which makes the use of copper very very easy for several industries. Now, what are the uses of copper? First, copper is an excellent conductor of electricity. That is why it is used in the manufacture of wires and electronic components. Like I told you that copper is a great conductor of electricity. Because of this, it is used to manufacture wires and it is used in several other electronic devices. It is used in fans, it is used in ACs, it is also used in your mobile phone. So it is used in several electronic components because it is such a great conductor of electricity. Next, copper is also an excellent conductor of heat. Hence it is used as a heat sink in many devices. I told you this also that copper is a great conductor of heat. Because of this, copper is used as a heat sink in many devices. Now, you might have seen newer higher end devices that means mobile phones. In those mobile phones, copper is used as, as a heat sink to remove heat from that mobile. Copper is also used as a heat sink on processors in CPU to remove heat from the CPU. Other than this, copper is used in several other devices as a heat sink to remove heat from that particular device. Also, copper is used for the production of calorie meter. You might have studied this in physics. Next, alloyed with other metals, copper is used to manufacture brass, bronze, monal metal and etc. Now these alloys are very very important because these alloys are used for the manufacture of many things, utensils, pipes and many other things and the major component of these alloys is copper. Next, copper is used for the manufacture of utensils, we all know this. So guys these were the uses of copper, there are many other uses, you can study that too. Now what is the distribution of copper in India? We have Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan and Jharkhand. Now Madhya Pradesh is currently the highest producer of copper. What are the locations in Madhya Pradesh? Balaghat and Betul. Then we have Rajasthan. What are the locations in Rajasthan? We have Jhunjhunu and Alwar. Then we have Jharkhand. What is the location in Jharkhand? Singhu. So guys this was all regarding copper. Everything is very important over here. So try to understand everything. Now we will move on to the next mineral. Moving on to bauxite. Bauxite is the ore of aluminium. Bauxite is processed into alumina. Aluminium is obtained from alumina by the process of electrolysis. In chemistry, you will study about the extraction of aluminium from bauxite in details. So over here, we do not have to go into any details. You just need to know that bauxite is the ore of aluminium and aluminium is obtained from bauxite. What are the uses? First, as aluminium is lightweight and durable, it is used in the manufacture of aircraft bodies. Aluminium is a very lightweight metal and it is highly durable. That is why it is used in the manufacturing of aircraft bodies. Other than this, aluminium is also used in the manufacturing of modern locomotive bodies as well as vehicles because it is first of all lightweight which provides speed and it is durable which provides strength. Next, aluminium is used in the electronic industry as it is a good conductor of electricity. Now aluminium is also a good conductor of electricity that is why it has an extensive use in the electronic industry. Nowadays many wires are made up of aluminium and many other electronic components also are made up of aluminium. Next, it is used to manufacture utensils. A lot of utensils is manufactured by aluminium. Next, it is used in construction. Aluminium has been used in construction for a long time now. It has the same reason, it is light and it is durable. That is why it is being used in construction. So these were the uses. There are many other uses of aluminium, you can study them too. Now what is the distribution of bauxite in India? The four states that produce the majority of bauxite in India are Odisha, Gujarat, Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Currently, Odisha is the largest producer of bauxite. What are the locations? 
the locations are koraput and sambalpur then we have gujarat what are the locations in gujarat amraeli and kheda then we have jharkhand what are the locations in jharkhand ranchi and gumla then we have chatisgarh in chatisgarh bauxite is found in mandla and balaghat so guys that was all regarding bauxite and aluminium everything is very important over here so try to understand everything now guys with the end of bauxite we come to an end of mineral resources we will cover the other part of this chapter that is energy resources in the next video so do watch that video until then this is rishi on behalf of reception signing off and guys take care